Let's meditate upon uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 14. Today, as we meditate upon this, you know, Jesus wants to remind us about our lifestyle. As we work, as we live a life which is, you know, trained or standardized by the Word of God. It's not that we just read the Word of God and, you know, you know like, uh, uh, you know, the beginners or, you know, people who are just reading a subject and studying a new subject in their school. You know, they just read a subject, read, it, read some textbook and, you know, try to memorize something and go ahead. It's not like that. It is like, you know, even you memorize or whatever you do, you study. There is a way you study. There is a way you read the scriptures. And where, there are various ways you read the scriptures. You study the scriptures. You meditate on the scriptures. You search in the scriptures. And, uh, you know, you receive a revelation in the scriptures. So many ways that you can uh, uh, use the scriptures. And as we do that, as we do that, what happens is, you know, we get strengthened and we walk a, a life that is uh, uh, enabled us by the knowledge of God. How do you get the knowledge of God? Knowledge of God you get also by reading the word and by revelation. It is a merged thing, not just by uh, reading the word. You know, people who get knowledge only by reading a subject, their knowledge is limited to what is written. But then... When you read the scriptures, it is not like that. Scriptures is a power alive, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and it is written. And when in the power of the Holy Spirit, you meditate, you read, you search, you study the scriptures, you memorize, you do all these things in the scriptures. What happens is, one by one, these scriptures come to life. The revelation and the knowledge is added to you. It is not a literal knowledge that is added. It is a knowledge with the revelation and power. Knowledge to know about God, revelation to get deeper into it and to understand what is it for you, grace and strength to live according to that and practice it and be experts in those standards. And your, your lifestyle of living will start differing in the way you live, in the way you make decisions, in the way you walk. It becomes a victorious walk. Praise God. So how to make it victorious walk is not by just joining some uh, procession already like, you know, there are uh, processions there in the world, we do processions or marches where, you know, we have an agenda there. And, uh, even the religious, pro uh, pro uh, you know, processions. Uh, sometimes we you, uh, participate in the religious pro uh, processions also. Our mind will be somewhere else, you know, it, it is only external part, then it is of no use. Now only a percentage of honor to God, that's all. But then, it is a, it's talking about uh, something that we walk, a victorious pathway. A march in the victorious way. And by having this practical knowledge of the Word of God. Livable knowledge and living knowledge. Okay, let's, let's read this word, yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Verse 14, yeah. But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. He leads us into a triumphal procession. Uh, no, uh, procession. It is a triumphal. It is already a victorious procession. Victor, victory comes after there is a fight. You know, after the enemy is defeated, you walk in this procession to the destiny. Where is destiny? Destiny is to the you know, to, towards the king. Because, you know, that is where you assemble and uh, enjoy your banquet of, uh, you know, victory. And then you, you, you know, uh, take positions of the victorious place. Okay. And through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. Ah, there is a fragrance that comes... From what? Not by living. Uh, some people may think, you know, because of a righteous living, a fragrance comes. No, 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 no. The Word of God very clearly says, the fragrance comes by knowing Him. You know Him, you have a fragrance. You know the Lord, you have a fragrance. But knowing the Lord, not just by literally by the Word. Know Him by the Word as well as, you know, with the revelation that He gives. Believing in God, we say. We, I believe in God. You believe in God? On what word you, do you believe if you ask? You don't know the word at all. 
And if you ask what, what you're praying for, and if, if there is any base scripture for what you're praying and depending upon God for, brother, I'm praying for uh, healing. Okay, what, what scriptures do you have as a base for healing? What, what do you depend upon? They will think. And they will find some scripture about healing and then they will say, if they know it by heart. If they know uh, you are praying for a marriage, you are praying for a life partner, where is the scripture behind it? What scripture you are depending upon? No idea. So if today your condition is like that, we are very much, you know, like children in the scriptures. We have no scripture base for our thoughts, we have no scripture base for our prayers, we have no scripture base for our walking, we have no scriptures way for our lifestyle. Then where are we? Whom are we believing in? You believe in the Lord, that means you believe in His words. You believe in His words means you believe in what is written and you read that and you believe in that, you put it in faith, you take that as a base to believe or to trust some blessing to come or something to walk on. Praise God. If that base itself is not there, you cannot say that I, I, I believe in something and walk in something. And that walk in something became, becomes vain and it has nothing inside because it is, not a, it is not a capsule filled with something. It is an empty capsule. If you can imagine a capsule with something inside, it is having nothing there. It is only a shell of faith that you call faith. Nothing inside it. And that cannot take you somewhere. If, you have, if, the, if something has to be taken, if, 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 if the power of God has to take you somewhere, if you are depending on God has to take you somewhere, what is that you are based on? Every thought, every action, every plan, every future plan, every prayer has to be based on some scriptures, some word of God that you believe in. Do you wait on the Lord for finances? Believe in the finances, financial, you know, breakthrough word or some word that has been directing you there. Today the word is not directing us there. Some thoughts or some t preaching, you know, vague preaching sometimes, not even based on the word. Something that is told by some, something, you know, some, is, that is understood by us, is leading us there. Today, even though you have some ideas about the about the religious aspects. Go to the base of the word. Identify what is the root. When you see a shoot, if you don't identify the root, you don't have the control of the plant. You are just viewing it from far. There is a difference between weaving a plant from far and weaving the plant and feeding it from close by, a nearby position. To know the plant, you should know the shoot as well as, you know, you should, you may not see the root, but you should know, you should feel, have a feel of the root. And you should, you should be able to identify what kind of root it is and, you know, how it is spread and, you know, how it can be, you know, nurtured. If you just identify some shoot or some, uh, you know, fruit or some flower of the plant or uh, from far, that means you are at a distance, you are nowhere closer to it. We are nowhere near to it. And how can you experience a blessing in our lives? My dear brothers and sisters, that's why there is a aroma that comes Amen. from the knowledge of the Lord. And that aroma itself will identify your standard of what you're doing. The way you're praying, the way you're depending on God, the way you are able to commit yourself to the Lord the way you are able to offer sacrifices to the Lord, the way you are worshipping the Lord, the way you have the fear of the Lord, the way you dedicate your time to the Lord, the way you are committed, all that is got from where? From the knowledge of the truth that you have, that is the base that you have. And just that knowledge itself, which is, you know, that knowledge which is added with the revelation is aroma. And that aroma spreads, that lifestyle spreads. And you know what happens? Among two categories of people it spreads. People who are saved, people who are dying. They are, in the, they are two different parts. People who are going to the life, people who are going to the eternal death, 
there are two, two different categories of people receive that aroma. Praise God, the same aroma. And it is a blessing to those who, you know, it is, it is edifying to those who walk in faith. They, 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 that is a support by you and you are supported by them. Yeah, let's continue reading it, yes. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being uh -huh. saved and among those who are perishing. We are the aroma of Christ to whom? To God. When we come as a sacrifice, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, everywhere if you study, when there is an offering, there is an aroma that the Lord smelled it and he accepted the sacrifice. So, this aroma has to come. It is not only that people get it, God gets it. It is a spiritual aroma. God gets that aroma, he, it, it pleases him. When you come with that aroma and offer the sacrifice in the presence of God, your actions and all, all of the actions will be in line with that aroma. They are not dead actions, they are life-filled actions because with the knowledge of truth, with the revelation, with the actions, they are all attached, they are coming together and there contains the aroma. And that aroma, when it goes in the presence of God, it pleases and the Lord accepts your sacrifice. Your sacrifice of thanksgiving, your sacrifice of praise, your sacrifice of offering, whatever, 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 your finances or whatever you bring before the Lord. It is acceptable. God doesn't reject it because there is an aroma. There is a knowledge of God. There is a knowledge of what? Kingdom of God. And that contains aroma. Okay, that is spreading among God and? Among those who are being saved uh -huh. and among those who are perishing. Perishing. To the one her fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Life. From death to death and from life to life. Yeah, then we'll continue. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not peddlers of God's word like so many. Ah, uh, see, there are people who are peddlers of God's word. God's word means they just take the word of God literally and then just treat it as just as a word. They don't respect it. They don't take the word and uh, identify the life in it and walk and receive the life from it. They take it only as a word. And they just use it for their benefit and they just do arguments about it. And this, they throw it away and without any God-fearing attitude, you know, they proceed and they get what they want and they cook up what they want with that word. And they get their desires and their... Uh, you know, decisions satisfied in their word, in that word. So, if they want to encourage their lifestyle, they will pick a word which will encourage the lifestyle and go ahead. They don't want the revelation about it. They don't want what God wants to do about it. They don't want the details about it. They don't want the aroma. They are just taking God's word for their, you know, uh, advantage. Yeah. We are not like that, but then... But in Christ we speak as persons of sincerity. Uh, we speak as the persons of sincerity. We practice the word and we are experienced in living that word and out of that sincerity we speak. Not just quote the word and go away. Every time we, we speak to you, we preach your word, you know, we have experience about what we are talking to you. We have experienced, we have lived the word of God, we know how it is and how it you know works with us, how it doesn't work with us, how we fail, how we win, and we have that experience, and that's why we can share it as an experience, and that is what the Word of God is saying. We share it as an experience, and not just as just take a word and just speak about it. No, okay. As persons sent from God and standing in His presence. In His presence, praise God. So people who do this, they walk in victory. They walk, and God is calling us, me and you, today. Reflect about this aspect and walk in victory. Victory in a triumphant procession. There is a procession which is very triumphant. It is victorious. You are there, you are present there, and you are walking there. means that you are having the victory, and you are receiving that victory, and you are enjoying that victory. <clears throat> you are declaring that victory. 
and their aroma comes out of you. <clears throat> so today, three things you have to remember. The word that supports your lifestyle, your prayer, your thoughts, your decisions, your future, everything. There should be a base scripture that supports it. There should be a revelation that is added to it. And you should desire for it. And from there comes the aroma which is pleasing to God. And it is spreading among people. And then what? You walk in a victory path. And as you walk in a victory path, all the blessings of God, the healing, the deliverance, everything is a byproduct. It has to come and it will be in its position because God has promised it. It is not that we do, it should not be that, you know, we only focus upon healing, only focus upon the miracles. And once we get it, we vanish. No, that is worldly way. That means your heart and mind still are worldly. You only come for that purpose. But here we desire Christ. We worship Him. We connect our life. We connect our future in the victory position, <coughs> victory procession. And therefore, we are in Christ completely. And Christ is in us. So that means what? Whatever is the result, whatever is the byproduct, we don't bother. Whether we heal, whether we get healed or not today, Jesus is our healer. Whether we are blessed or not today, Jesus is the one who blesses us. He's a redeemer. He may choose or we may experience that manifestation as we set things right. It may be, you know, some things are not set right in our lives. And sometimes it may, God may require time to, you know, manifest things or to locate you. Sometimes, you know, some preparation or faith, a strengthening of faith has to happen in you that you may experience God's power. The miracle, healing, blessing and all, it will happen by the process. It will happen side by side. It's a byproduct. But the main thing is the aroma. Aroma of his knowledge that you get and you walk in and practice in and speak in. So let us speak the word. Let us preach the word that comes out of the aroma. Let that aroma please God. Let the Lord answer you and approve your sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whatever you give it in His presence. Heavenly Father, I pray, as you have revealed this revelation to us, Lord, we pray that open our minds, open our hearts, open our ears to your word, that we may grow deeper in your word, that we may be able to spend time and meditate on this, and that we may be able to understand and get the revelation of that word. As we are walking in this victory procession, that we may be able to experience that power and that aroma may please you and that aroma may spread among the people and that we may experience all the byproducts that you're giving, the blessing, the healing, the miracle and your presence all the time, your deliverance that we may see and we give you glory and praise, Lord. That people may see us and they may be attracted towards you and they may call us a blessing because your name will be glorified. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this blessing that you have given to us. That we thank you for this call that you have given to each and every one of us. Particularly, you have called us to experience this grace. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, let your power descend upon us. Let it magnify in us. Let your glory increase in us. Let your presence increase in us more and more. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.